Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, aka Mr. Valuation. And once again, it's my extreme pleasure to invite you to a subscriber request Tuesday video. This week, I'm going to be covering a real estate investment trust in the healthcare sector, Omega Healthcare Investors, Inc. And this is one that I've been requested to talk about or to upgrade, actually, or update several times. I will tell you, for disclosure, I'm long Omega. I do like this very much for the income that it produces. I do think there's also growth potential. And I think it's an excellent opportunity to um, talk about a stock that, you know, one of the things I often get requested or, uh, you know, get it's very common to get requests when the price of a stock is dropping, people tend to get very concerned and very interested in talking about the stock. And, you know, frankly, there are some what I'll call near-term, short-term oriented issues with Omega. But I also believe there's a long-term story here, and I'm going to try to basically make those distinctions because the short run has been problematic. They have a couple of um, operators that haven't been paying their rents. The COVID pandemic you know, hit them especially hard. That was all in the news. It wasn't just Omega, but any, anybody in the uh, you know nursing facility business obviously was facing this kind of issue with the pandemic, which did have a major effect on the elderly. Obviously, it was the most vulnerable portion of the population. But Omega has some very strong attributes that I'll be trying to cover in this video. So there are other aspects of real estate investment trust, though, that I think I want to try to basically enlighten. I think most people understand that REITs need to be looked at differently than regular companies. So let's go ahead and turn to fast graphs, if you will. And let's look at some of the specific differences. What I'm starting out with here, I'm looking at Omega Health Ventures, looking at adjusted operating earnings. I can also look at basic earnings, and I can also look at diluted earnings. In other words, there are multiple earnings options that you can look at with any company. But when you're looking at a real estate investment trust, earnings do not turn out to be a really great way to evaluate them. There are a couple of things I want you to note. I'm going to stick with diluted earnings here, which are GAAP. Note, first of all, that the dividend line is almost barely visible here because it's in the light green shaded area. It's not even covered by their diluted earnings, okay? Earnings are not covering the dividend. In other words, you know, they're paying, for example, in 2015, they paid $2.18 in dividends, and they only earned $1.24. So how can that be? And all across this whole thing, well, clearly... Earnings aren't the way to value REITs. REITs have very special capital structures. They were created under you know laws that give them certain requirements, and it all comes down to cash flows and income, which I'll get into here in a moment. But you don't look at REITs. And one of the issues here, though, that I think before I get off of this earnings thing is I want to go into fund graphs here, and I've already had it loaded. And I want you to look at basic and diluted shares outstanding. Okay, what you're going to see very commonly with REITs is that they are constantly going to the capital markets, issuing shares and raising capital. Okay, obviously they own real estate, they buy you know cash flow producing real estate, and they're constantly reinvesting in that re real estate. But this is a resource that REITs also have. Okay, in other words, they have the ability to go to the capital markets and you know raise capital. And Omega is very well positioned in that regard. And I'll let you do your own research to figure that out. The CEO of the company in the most recent earnings report that they did did point out that one of the real strengths, this is Taylor Pickett, their CEO, he said that the company does have a very, very strong balance sheet and probably has the strongest balance sheet that you know the company has ever had. Okay, so that's something to consider when you're looking at this. Now, how do you evaluate REITs? If earnings aren't the metric, what do you use? Well, you know, the standard metric has been what is called funds from operations or FFO. Now, in fast graphs, if you're a subscriber to fast graphs, you simply go to operating cash flow. And if it's a REIT, if it's in the, the real estate investment subsector, it will automatically convert to funds from operations. And you'll notice there's an F here and it's priced to FFO, okay? So what you're looking at are funds from operations are essentially a, a cash flow metric, if you will. REITs are required to pay out 90% of their distributable income by law to their shareholders, okay, to their owners. And, you know, you can see that the funds from operations have been covering the company's dividend quite well, except for one year, which was obviously 2017, where they actually had funds from operation at 215 and they paid out a $2.54 dividend.
But part of that has to do with it's considered today that another metric, which is the free cash flow metric on normal companies, it's called adjusted funds from operations, is the better metric which to value REITs and adjust REITs. But before I get into the AFFO, let me stay with the funds from operations for a moment and make a point. You can see this very strong correlation between price and FFO, if you will. And you can see that, you know, when the price drops, like here's the pandemic, you know, you can see this short little, I guess, recession, we're calling it now, where we had this flash crash where the stock price collapsed. Uh, but then it recovered pretty quickly, and then it's fallen again. And this is what's causing people problems. But if you look at funds from operations performance, currently real performance, as well as estimated performance, the company's FFO strongly supports a much higher valuation based on these historical norms. If you're using the normal price to FFO, I would value year-end Omega at around a $42 price, and the current price is around $28 a share. Now, this company offers almost a 10% dividend yield, and I do believe the dividend is secure, and I'll talk about that a little more. It trades at a blended FFO of 842 now, if you look at it from a standpoint of earnings, if you go to get a quote from someone like, let's say, Google, I want you to note that you're going to see a P.E. ratio of 15. Well, that's using the earnings metric, which is this metric here. That's not the proper metric. If you look at it from a true way to value REITs, which is FFO, and then more to the point, AFFO, as I'll get to in a moment, it's only trading at eight and a half times FFO. Its normal price to FFO has been about 12.68. So that's why I put it at a $42 price. But you can see it's also traded at a 15 price to FFO numerous times which would then give me an upside of about $50 a share. So you could almost say that this stock is on sale half off or almost half off currently. The price is dropping because there's been some, you know, concerns about the pandemic. There's been concerns about some operators. But, you know, I'm going to show you a place to go to look and learn more about the company. But the bottom line is, I do believe there are some short-term issues. Now, when you look at AFFO, you get a little better picture of the company and its valuations. The normal price to AFFO is just under 12, 11.97. That would value the stock at around 38, so a little more conservative, if you will, and an upside looking at a 15 price to AFFO of around 48, but very similar to what we saw with the FFO calculation. Now, let's talk about the difference. I went to the Corporate Finance Institute, CFI, and Googled, you know, what are the difference between adjusted funds from operations? Now, adjusted funds from operations, according to the CFI, is a measure of the financial performance of a REIT, and it is used as an alternative to FFO. According to the CFI, they believe AFFO is superior measure compared to FFO because the former FFO considers the maintenance cost of the real estate property over its life. The value of AFFO is obtained by making adjustments to the FFO figure to deduct recurring expenditures required to keep the real estate property running and generating revenue. Another adjustment made to FFO is straight lining of rents, which distributes rent expenses over the life of the property. Investors use AFFO as a better indicator of the REIT's ability to pay dividends from its net earning. Okay, now, the, so, you know, there are some differences here. I don't consider them to be material, but here's another problem. AFFO has been around for a lot shorter time frame than FFO. Companies have only started reporting it about the last 12 or 15 years or so. But regardless, you can see whether you're looking at it from an FFO or an AFFO basis, you see the strong correlation between price. You see when AFFO was dropping here, we did have weakness in the stock price for you know a two or three year period. Once it started to recover, we saw the stock price recover and everything was doing well until we hit the pandemic. And now we've got this issue with the some of the operators that are you know failing to pay their rents and so on. There's talk of the government coming in with subsidies. There's a lot of issues going here, but the real story here, so in the short run, there are issues. The company has just announced a shelf offering. The company, I think, does have financial flexibility. As I mentioned, the CEO talked about the strength of their balance sheet, and I think their ability to go to the capital markets and raise capital, if they need to, is still very, very much intact. But one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to take you to a recent presentation that the company did, and I want you to look at, and I'm going to put a link to this presentation 
presentation at the bottom of the video here, because there are some things that you need to consider about what's going on with the senior nursing facility industry. First of all, we have the baby boomers, which is a growing aging population. And you can see the percentage of 65 plus age population by 2030 is to increase from 17% currently to 19% by 2025, up to 22% of the population by 2040. So there's growth potential. Aging baby boomers are expected to drive a multi-decade increase in demand for senior nursing facilities. 44% projected increase in adults age 65 plus over the next 20 years is the bottom line. So there is this long-term opportunity. And if you look at Omega itself, now I can go, you know, there's more information about the demographics here. The senior nursing utilization rate is also increasing. But I think the key elements I want to look at here is how Omega fits in this regard. And this is all in this presentation. There's a lot of good information here that you can look at. My point is I'm looking at this as a long-term opportunity, recognizing that there are some short-term issues, but those short-term issues have created the price opportunity. I'll get back to that here in a moment. But the bottom line is when I'm looking at this stock here, you know, the company has really excellent financial performance among all real estate investment trusts. You know, their EBITDA percentage of total revenues for all these years, they've ranked number two. And in 2020, they dropped simply to number six. And that was, again, because of the pandemic issue. The company has a high yield and historically consistent dividend. They've increased their dividend for 17 consecutive years. A couple of points that are noteworthy here. The company's proud of that. The company is aware of that. And I think the company is going to do everything they can to maintain this dividend. And I don't see the dividend being in jeopardy. At this point, their 2020 AFFO payout ratio is 82.8%, which is well within, you know, what the company can handle. Their 10-year growth has been 88% and so on and so forth. You can look at all these statistics yourself. But let's go back to the fast graph here and let's look at it from a standpoint of coverage. AFFO is actually still producing. Estimates are for a little weakness. This is primarily indicated you know, as a result of some of the of a couple key operators, but they represent relatively large, but also relatively small, three, four percent of the company's total revenues, okay, are being impacted there. Because I can also go back into the financial underlying numbers here, the fund graphs, and I do want you to see that their revenues have been flat, but they've still been very strong. So the last three or four years, this is a you know, a headwind in revenue. Otherwise their revenue growth has been superb and it is expected to begin growing again, okay? So if I go here and look at the metric of sales per share, you can see that looking at forecasts, we are expecting relatively low, you know, sales growth over the next couple of years and maybe over the long run. But the key point here is that the company is trading at a very low valuation relative to their adjusted funds from operations. And I think that's the key point. The price has dropped, but it's dropped far more than the actual results of the business are justifying that it should have dropped. So I really like this company a lot. It's offering a 9.5% current dividend yield. And if I look at the long-term performance of this REIT, you can see that it's generated substantial dividend income or distributions is the proper term versus, say, the average company as represented by the S&P. Its growth potential hasn't been as much. It's not a fast-growing entity, and it's not expected to be that going forward. But when you add the two together, it really holds its own very nicely against the overall market and keeping in mind that we're measuring this when the valuation is very, very low. Double the price, which is what I believe this company is worth, approximately double what it's currently trading at here, slightly less, maybe 85 to 90 percent higher. And all of a sudden, you've got it being very competitive with the S&P 500. The difference being the S&P 500 is dangerously overvalued, in my opinion, right now and offers very little in yield. So if you're looking for current income as a retiree, let's say, I believe this is a very attractive investment. It's a triple B minus rating, which is actually a pretty good rating for REITs. The company's got, again, a strong balance sheet. It's got the ability to go out and raise more capital. It's got long-term prospects. 
that I think are very attractive for the company. And, you know, keep in mind, this company has made a lot of acquisitions. They've recently made one that you can read about if you get into doing your research and due diligence. But all in all, I would argue that this is a very undervalued, high quality REIT, healthcare REIT that you can buy with almost a 10% dividend yield now with a dividend that I feel is secure. Now that could change if, you know, as time goes on. But currently, you know, I'm looking for at least a maintaining the dividend for the next couple of years and then maybe growing it ever so slight. So I like this stock a lot. I think the opportunity here for even capital appreciation would come from the company moving back into alignment with a more normal valuation. That would be price to FFO expansion with very modest growth, but a very high dividend yield paying you to wait. So this is an income vehicle with capital appreciation potential as it reverts back to more normal valuations, which I don't see anything stopping it in the long run. So I like this company very much. I am long the stock for disclosure. The REIT, it's one that I would be aggressively buying today for new clients that are looking for income. Not necessarily new clients looking for total return or high rates of return, but it does fit that bill as well simply because the stock is so inexpensive. You know, Warren Buffett said, be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. This is probably a time to be greedy with this REIT. The price is down, and I feel like that's opportunity knocking, not really reflective of the issues that the company is facing, although they are facing some issues. But I do consider those short-term and overcomable by a very excellent management team that's as skilled as anybody in the REIT them, in my opinion. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching. This is my subscriber request update on Omega Healthcare Investors, Inc. 9.54% current dividend yield, capital appreciation potential based on a reversion to the mean valuations going forward. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give me a like, you know, ring the bell. If you want to, you know, so if you want to access new videos like this coming up, I do this one every, I do a subscriber request every Tuesday, but I also cover a lot of other areas, including growth stocks, dividend growth stocks, etc. And you might want to take a look at the new and improved version of Fast Graphs. It's fast, it's powerful, and I wouldn't even consider investing in stocks without it. And I hope this gave you some insights into REITs and how REITs work, as well as this particular REIT, Omega Healthcare Adventures. Thanks for watching.